Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. The end of the year is here and it is time to take a look back at all of the stuff that I reviewed over the last 12 months and find the best of the bunch. And I've got 10 items for you this year to talk about along with three honorable mentions. So without further ado, let's get to it. Now, before we jump into this, I do want to let you know that this video is being brought to you by all of you. That includes everyone who watches and subscribes to this channel throughout the year. Thank you very much for that. Along with those of you who have contributed to the channel, either through my donor box page at lon.tv slash support, through the YouTube membership program, through Patreon or Floatplane, and of course through Super Thanks. Your support is greatly appreciated and it led to another great year here on YouTube and on Amazon and Floatplane, uh, which are all the places that I upload content to. So why don't we get into this list now and see what we've got. Remember, the rules for this are that I have to have had reviewed it over the last year. There are some great products out there that I have not reviewed, so I'm not going to include them on this list. And what's fun about the things that I review is that a lot of this stuff is a little quirkier, so you may not have been aware of it before, but you will be now. And I'll have links to the reviews down in the video description. So why don't we start off with PCs. My favorite PC of this year by far was a little green computer from GMK Tech, and that is their G3 Plus. I think their prior version, the G3, made it to this video last year. And this is a very inexpensive, small Windows mini PC powered by an Intel N150 processor. You can upgrade it, I think, to 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's got two hard drive slots on board. Performance is remarkably good for its price. It's gotten a little more expensive because of memory prices and tariffs and all the other economic issues out there, but it's still a pretty affordable computer and you can get them under $200 directly at GMK Tech's website. Great little PC, great for Linux, great for server applications too. And speaking of servers, I looked at another Intel N150 device that I like quite a bit this year, and that is the B-Link ME Mini. And like the GMK Tech machine we just looked at, it is powered by an N150 Intel processor, great for home server tasks. But what sets this one apart is that it has six NVMe slots inside, so you can make yourself a really nice, compact, solid-state, network-attached storage device. I'm actually running Unraid on it for my Plex server, and it's been running now for the last couple of months pretty much nonstop, and it's working great at that task. I got a few other Docker containers running on it too. It's got great cooling. The whole thing is just very well engineered and constructed for a lower cost mini PC. You can usually get these for under $400 or so. So another one that made the cut this year. And I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that both of these PCs came in free of charge from their manufacturers. However, no other compensation was received and they were not involved in the reviews or making this list this year. Let's move on now to our next category, which is gaming. And I've got two things to take a look at this year. The first is a little GPU, or I should say a compact GPU from GMK Tech. And they call it the AD-GP1. This is an external GPU with an AMD RX 7600M XT inside with eight gigabytes of video memory. And you can connect it up to a Thunderbolt equipped PC, but also USB 4 equipped PCs that have a 40 gigabit per second USB 4 port on board. Additionally, they have an Oculink connector, so you can connect it directly to the system bus if you have an Oculink compatible computer. And in a second video on this product I did a few months ago, we took out that G3 Plus and we put in an Oculink adapter into its NVMe slot and we were actually able to connect that GPU up to that little mini PC. So there's a lot of fun things you can do with it, but at a minimum, it's nice to have something compact and portable that you can just plug in and immediately get all the benefits of an external GPU on your laptop. Pretty cool device from GMK Tech, about $460 give or take and definitely check out the review of it in the video description below. And I do wanna let you know that the GPU came in free of charge from GMK Tech. Next up on the list here is the Legion Go S. This is another portable gaming PC from Lenovo, but this one is running Steam OS. I think this might've been one of the first licensed handhelds to be powered by that Linux-based operating system. It's a nice improvement on the Steam Deck. It's a little more powerful. The display's a little bit nicer. So it's nice to have alternatives in the Steam OS world. And I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of those in 2026. 
Very nice handheld PC. In fact, I like it a little bit more than the Legion Go 2 that I've got over there that I do have to get a review put together on soon. So definitely check that out. And Lenovo sent that in on loan. All right, next up is our retro category. I've got two items to talk about here. One is affordable and one is free. In fact, there's multiple versions of that free one. First, the affordable one, the Summer Cart 64. These are flash cartridges for the Nintendo 64. They're based on an open source design. They're manufactured by a bunch of different companies. I got mine on AliExpress and you can find a bunch of options there. They're all the same. They're just made by different companies and I'll put a link to the one that I bought in the video description. What I like about the summer cart is that it gives your N64 new abilities like being able to play 64 DD games along with the entire library of games that you might want to play including homebrew titles, new games that are being written right now in the modern era here. Additionally, the summer cart works with the analog 3D console. We tested that out a couple of weeks ago when I got my analog 3D in. Now the other item is totally free and these are the NES to SNES ports of popular games. And these ports are being put together by a very talented developer named Infidelity. And what's amazing about the work that Infidelity is doing here is that he's not reinventing the games when he moves them over. They play exactly like they do on the Nintendo, but a lot of the things that you might notice on the Nintendo, like screen flicker or perhaps some other things that the hardware was constraining, are not present in the Super Nintendo version, so they play much better, but they are the same game. But he's added some quality of life improvements. So in Contra, for example, you can store an extra weapon. In Metroid, he's got a map that you can pull up. All sorts of cool stuff that he's done to very gently enhance the games while still maintaining the core of the gameplay from the 8-bit original. They are really fun to play with. They run on emulators, but they also run on original hardware. Some of the games have opening video cutscenes, which is really cool to see playing on original Nintendo hardware. So definitely check them out. I'll put the link to the video that I did in the video description along with a link where you can find these games and play them yourself. All right, next up is the camera and photo category. And I've got two fun things here. The first one is the Kodak Slide and Scan. Now this is not made by Kodak, it's made by a licensee, but it's got the yellow Kodak uh, branding nonetheless. And what this lets you do is scan your negatives and your slides into a digital format. The unit is all self-contained, it records everything onto an SD card and you can pop it into your computer and share it. Now the scan quality on this is not great, but what's great about it is how fast you can scan. So if you're just looking for some casual captures of negatives for Instagram or your family digital photo album or something, it's probably gonna be fine for that. It's not great for professional use cases, but as we saw the other day in my Gemini AI video, you can run them through Gemini, for example, and dramatically improve the quality of the images while retaining all of the subjects of those images. It's a really fun project. So it did enhance the value of that slide and scan a bit for me. But even without that, I think the speed in which you can capture images is really great for people that are not looking for spectacular output, but want something usable that they can share with others. All right, next up is our apps category. And I've got two great free apps here to talk about. The first one is called Local Send. And what Local Send lets you do is very quickly airdrop files between Android phones and iPhones or any other platform. It runs across everything, including Linux, Windows, Mac, iPhone, Android, you name it, you could probably get a version of Local Send to run on it. And it really does give you airdrop-like functionality on just about any platform you can imagine. It is very useful. It works over your local network, so there's no internet involved. Great app. If you've never played with it before, download it. You will find uses for it. I can guarantee it. Now, this next one is for the Mac only, but it is incredibly valuable for its low, low price of free. And that is UTM. UTM is a virtualization app for the Mac. It runs on Apple Silicon Macs and allows you to boot up the ARM version of Windows 11, for example. You can also boot up ARM versions of Linux distributions. They've got some great starting points on their website that you can just click and install and get off and running with. But it also allows you to emulate too. So for example, I'm able to run classic Mac through UTM on my MacBook Air here. I can also run Windows 98, emulating an Intel-based machine to do so. And of course, you can run other more modern Intel-based operating systems on it too. Of course, the modern OSs will run a little bit slower if they are being emulated, but the ARM-based ones are pretty quick. 
Unfortunately, right now, UTM doesn't support hardware video acceleration in Windows or Linux, I think, but I'm sure at some point that will come around. But if you got a Windows app, you got to boot up quickly rather than having to buy one of those more bloated commercial uh, virtualization packages here, UTM is totally free and you can get Windows spun up on your computer super quick and be able to run those applications that you need to. And the Intel uh, emulation or remapping works fine on the ARM version of Windows running through UTM on the Mac. So it's a great package. If you haven't checked it out yet, definitely have a look. So let's move on now to our honorable mentions. Now this first device would have been in the retro category if not for the fact that you can't get one. This is called the Mr. Pi, and this is a low cost entry point into the Mr. FPGA project. If you're not familiar with the Mr., it allows you to boot up just about every retro computer you can think of along with just about every retro game console you can think of along with a number of arcade games too. It hooks up great to not only modern HDMI televisions, but also to CRT TVs. It's, an, it's just an amazing device. I've done a ton of content on this, so I won't belabor it. And the Mr. Pi was a great entry point because you could buy a complete set here for under $200, plug it in and get up and running. But it's so popular, you can't get one. And that's why it's in the honorable mention category. Do, though, head over to RetroRemake.co because the maker of this, Taki Udon, has a new device called the Super Station 1 that looks like a little PlayStation, but it, too, will be a self-contained Mr. that's not all that expensive, and although it looks like a PlayStation, it actually can run the full Mr. library, too. So that's going to be one to take a look at, and I'm pretty sure that one's going to make the cut uh, in next year's video. Next up here, the Unify 10 gigabit per second Ethernet adapter. Nothing exciting here. It was only a three and a half minute video, but it's an affordable 10 gig adapter if you have a Thunderbolt or USB 4 based computer. It doesn't have a fan like some of the other cheaper ones do, but it's under 200 bucks and it performed quite well in my testing. And it's from Unify, who uh, runs a lot of my networking stuff around the house here. And I did pay for that adapter with my own funds. So if you wanted a fast Ethernet adapter and needed 10 gigs, I think that one's the way to go. Last item in the honorable mention category is the 8-Bit Doe Ultimate 2C. This is a $29 game controller for the Switch or PC and all the compatible devices, including the Mr. here. And it's a great controller for 30 bucks. It's not like the old cheap generic controllers you used to hand to your little brother or sister when you were a kid. It's actually a decent controller for the price. And if you needed to get a bunch of controllers for some couch co-op, I think that is definitely a great affordable way to go. So that will do it for our top tech of 2025, at least insofar as the stuff that I have looked at. Without question, you probably saw stuff that I reviewed that you had no idea that I reviewed because the YouTube algorithm has no idea what to do with me at this point. So definitely take a look at the playlist in the video description to see the full reviews of all of the stuff that I just talked about. And also just go to my YouTube channel at lon.tv and look at all the videos that you've likely not seen. I do have an email list that I send out once a week at lon.tv slash email, which summarizes all the stuff that I've worked on over the past week. And I also have a daily list at lon.tv slash digest that you can subscribe to if you want to get notified more frequently. But we will, of course, be back in 2026. I am heading to CES again this year, so we're going to have a fun set of dispatch videos coming up too. And I'm looking forward to another great year here on YouTube. Somehow I'm still surviving here. Uh, so we're still in business and all is good for now. But I'm always wondering when the shoe's going to drop. But it's not dropping because all of you are watching as best you can. And I greatly appreciate all of the support. We'll have some more tech reviews coming up, of course, before the end of the year. But this is a great time just to thank you all for your continued support and letting me kind of do my dream job here, uh, sitting in my basement talking about tech. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.